So there was one part of my life when I used to think that, oh yeah, I've seen the sunset. Yeah, 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 I've seen it. I've seen it from that location, no problem. It's the same thing. And uh, I moved into this house overlooking the ocean and I could watch the sunset over the ocean every day. And so every evening I would go out and watch the sunset and it changed my life. I connected to nature. I connected to everything in a different way to where um, every little moment was different and special and I knew nothing. I knew way less than what I did before because what I thought before was it's all the same. I've got it under control. And my new way was it's nature, that it's all change, that everything is change. And if you are having a fantastic time right now, wait a little while and it'll eventually start sucking. If you're having a terrible time right now, just wait a little while and it'll start getting better and better. So everything we do in life will eventually change. Our health will eventually go away, money goes up and down, our relationships go up and down. Life changes and this is just the rule of life and it happens for everybody. We lose loved ones, we gain new friends, we have victories, we have defeats. And the trick is to always continue trying, always continue striving, always continue improving, always love more. And it, it, life is like juggling. You can always add another ball, you can always add another zero. Art is that same way too, and the art of living is that way, where there's always more to learn, there's always more growth to get, always another lesson. So. Never be satisfied. Life isn't a mountain that we climb. And when we get to the top, we're done. Instead, there's always another mountain to climb, always more. And so, seek. It's through seeking with new eyes and being optimistic about the way we approach things that we learn lessons. I learn lessons from children, I learn lessons from adults, from grandparents, I learn lessons from my greatest friend, and I learn lessons from my biggest enemy. And all the lessons just help me to grow, to change, to make changes in myself, improvements on myself, and changing my patterns, setting rules, regulations, and boundaries that I didn't have before. So life is an evolutionary process. There's always more. There's always more to love, always more to do, and you will die with a list a mile long. So get busy doing the things that really matter to you, things that'll last for lifetimes, things that will actually change other people's lives for lifetimes. And that's not physical stuff usually, it's the spiritual stuff. It's not the mental stuff, it's experiences. It's things that'll help us to evolve, to grow. Now, I had a near-death experience when I was 16 years old, and I got to go to this place most people would call heaven, or the eternal, or the collective consciousness, or God. And I got to go to this spot where I knew and felt everything going on on the planet. It was an amazing event for me because when I came back, what I learned was we're all infinite energy. We're all this eternal energy. And with that energy, we're all connected. We're all one. We're part of this collective. We're individually viewing things that are really part of ourselves. So when I began to see myself in other people's eyes. It changed me. I could no longer harm or hurt anybody. All I could do was come from a place of love. So when we help others, when we don't fight, there can only be peace. When you resolve a problem, there is no longer a problem. When you come and cooperate collaborate and communicate when you work together
to make things right, then things are right. There is no problem. So we together, unified, can solve problems that used to exist for everybody when we were at a fight or flight place. We collectively are growing beyond all that. We're unifying and coming up with solutions that work for all, for we the people, for the collective of the world. Buckminster Fuller spoke of this, that when you look into the future, you can see that we have the ability to robotize and use machines to grow food, to distribute things for us, to take care of a lot of things that we have been calling jobs. And so as we grow and evolve over the next bunch of years, those jobs that we used to have are going away. And as those jobs go away, we should be adjusting. We the people, we the society should be adjusting. And that adjustment should be that we spend more time on spiritual matters instead of physical matters. And I'm hoping that part of our evolution is exactly that, that we get to spend 40 hours a week working on our spirit and only a couple hours a week actually working some menial job. And we're all enslaved to a society where there's something called fractional reserve banking. And it's based on infinite debt. It's not a good system. And imagine a world without money. Imagine a world where we all took care of each other and we took our passions and our gifts and we shared our gift with the world. And we got money or what used to be considered money back by the new version of money, which is called appreciation. And that's love. Love appreciates. So start to say thank you and mean it. Start to have gratitude for other people and mean it. And give to other people and mean it with no expectation of getting anything back. When you give unconditionally, there's value. So there is this incredible story about Mother Teresa. She was being visited by one of the richest men in the world. And he came and said, Mother Teresa, I need to see what your budget is so I know how much money to give you. And she said, well, budget, I don't have a budget. There is no budget. Whatever you give to me, I immediately give away. The whole world needs things. And I'm willing to give everything you give immediately away to help those people in need. And he said, well, how will I know how much to give? And she said, well, very simply, give as much as you can until it begins to hurt and then give some more and then you will feel the value of what you're giving of the pain that you're alleviating with your donation wow that is unconditional love it's a version of it to where we give as much as we can until it begins to hurt and then we give some more love one another Wow. All world's religions say love one another. That's the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have done to you. In science, they say for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. That if you give love, you get love. If you give hate, you get hate. And it's all contagious. Everything is contagious. If I laugh, you'll laugh. If I smile, you'll smile. If I'm full of anger and hatred, you'll be in resistance and anger and hatred. So everybody on the planet can feel this. Everybody on the planet can give this. And if you want yum instead of yuck, then give yum. That's the best way that we all can get along. Love one another. Work together to create a better world. I always end things with laugh more, worry less, love all with gratitude. And the funny thing about the love all, <laughs> the funny thing about love all is 
that I mean love everything, every living thing, every person, every plant, every animal, and every problem that you have. Love the bad guy, the good guy. Love it all because it's all there to teach you lessons and help you to grow. So laugh more, worry less, love all with gratitude. I love you.